Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 256. What's going on, everybody? So we almost didn't even have a Daily Drop tonight. I had a plumber at my house all day. It's just it's been a nightmare, an absolute nightmare of a day. The good news is we finally purchased a new vehicle to replace the one that was totaled a couple of weeks ago. So that's a little bit of uh, good news. But the plumbing situation was just brutal. It kept me busy all morning. I've been scrambling around. I had to stay home with the plumber the whole nine yards. But thankfully, he was able to get done sooner than expected. And here we are with the daily drop. So tonight, our episode, we're going to talk about Ghislaine Maxwell and her new ask. Her team is asking that the witnesses in her case, this criminal case, are gagged now. She doesn't want them to be able to talk about anything that has to do with the case. While at the same time, Ghislaine Maxwell is asking for permission to identify any of the the survivors who have already come forward. Now, Judge Nathan has already shown that she doesn't want to give out a gag order in this case. At least it seems that way. So I would think that moving forward here, that this is going to be a big fat no from Judge Nathan as well. But we'll have to see what she says. This article today that we're going to read is from the Daily Mail. The headline is exclusive. Ghislaine Maxwell ambushes prosecutors by asking for a gag order on witnesses in her criminal trial, but wants permission to identify any alleged survivors who have already come forward. The author of this article is Josh Boswell. Ghislaine Maxwell ambushed prosecutors by asking for a gag order on witnesses in her criminal trial court documents seen by DailyMail.com claim. And this is, look, these are the kind of tactics that we should expect out of Ghislaine Maxwell's people. They're high profile lawyers, they cost a lot of money, and they're going to do whatever they possibly can do to try and tip the table in their favor. I don't think they have anything to go on here, though. I don't think that they have a merit-based argument here, and I think it's more of just throwing shit against the wall, hoping something sticks. Maxwell's lawyers filed an affidavit in her child sex trafficking case on Monday asking a New York judge to prevent prosecution witnesses from publishing information about the case online. Well, look, another reason that they're saying this is because there's going to be some damning evidence that is produced in Discovery. And they're trying to get ahead of that right now and get Judge Nathan to jump on board and gag it now so they don't have to worry about putting out those fires when the case start, when the trial starts because it's going to be some damning stuff. We're talking, they're saying photographs, some video, et cetera, et cetera. So you could see why they're in scramble mode and why they filed this affidavit right away today. But again, I really don't think that Judge Nathan is going to give in to their request here. Prosecutors scrambled to file a letter to Judge Allison Nathan in response, claiming they had been negotiating with Jeffrey Epstein's alleged madam's legal team as recently as 6 p.m. last night and were surprised by the gagging request. Well, the prosecution should not be surprised by anything, okay? They have to be ready to go on their toes all the time, and they have to be ready to be on the offensive. You cannot go on the defense against people like this. You have to take the center of the ring, bite down on your mouthpiece, and start throwing bombs. The British socialite, co-conspirator, general scuzzbag, child abuser, Attorney wrote to Judge Nathan asking her to keep discovery materials from being published, but wanted permission to identify witnesses and and Maxwell's alleged survivors who have already come forward in the case. See what's going on here? They're trying to do an end around. So what they'll do is they'll try and get this gag order on the witnesses while at the same time trying to pony it up and make it so that they can out whoever they want. 
And it's all part of their strategy. They're going to try and muckrake. They're going to try and attack the girls' characters here. They're going to try and use the same strategy that old dirty-ass Dersh used uh, when Epstein got the plea agreement the first time around. The thing that's different, though, this time, they're not going to be able to pull pull the old okey-doke on us because we're all paying attention. Maxwell, 58, currently faces trial over criminal child sex trafficking charges in New York, accused of procuring girls as young as 14 for pedophile Epstein to abuse. She has pleaded not guilty and has denied any wrongdoing. Oh, well, that's that's it then, folks. You know, Ghislaine Maxwell has denied any wrongdoing, so it's probably prudent for us to just move on with our lives and, you know, not ask her any more questions. In fact, maybe they should just release her from jail. What an absolute joke, okay? Nobody is, uh, nobody's feeling sorry for Ghislaine Maxwell right now. Nobody's feeling bad that she's in jail. Guess what? You abuse these girls according to what they said, according to tons of them, and now you must pay the price. Maxwell's lawyer, Christian Everdell, a Harvard graduate, by the way, wrote, The defense believes that potential government witnesses and their counsel should be subject to the same restrictions as the defense concerning appropriate use of the discovery materials, namely, if these individuals are given access to discovery materials during a trial preparation, they may not use those materials for any purpose other than preparing for trial in the criminal case and may not post those materials on the internet, the affidavit said. And this is a shrewd move by them. I, I, you know, this is what you expect when you're paying big fuzzles for lawyers. You expect them to do everything in their power to give you the upper hand. And that's what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get out in front of just how bad the these files are going to be. The defense believes it should not be restricted from publicly disclosing or disseminating the the identity of any alleged survivor or potential witnesses referenced in the discovery materials who have already identified themselves by speaking on the public record, the lawyer wrote. And look, I'm not a lawyer, right? And I don't really know one way or the other how that usually works. But I don't know what the issue is if the survivors have already come forward, right? It's not like they're doxing them. I think what should happen is it should be a case-by-case basis. The survivors should be asked how they feel about having their name thrown out there. Look, at some point, at some point, we have to take a good look at what has occurred in this case, and we have to make sure that it does not happen this time around. Because there is so much riding on this prosecution, folks. The affidavit said Maxwell's legal team had been negotiating with assistant U.S. attorneys Allison Moe, Alex Ross Miller, and Maureen Comey, the daughter of former FBI director James Comey. And the whole team so far has done a pretty good job. I'll even give Maureen Comey a bit of a nod for the job she's done so far, but I do not trust Maureen Comey as far as I could throw her. I am I am really sick of these generational type people having these positions of power, okay? We're not aristocracy here in America. We don't have, you know, where you, you inherit your father's job or anything like that, okay? So I, I really just don't dig the nepotism. I don't dig it at all. It doesn't matter who it's involved with. I just don't like it, especially in the public sector. Audrey Strauss, acting acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, shot back a one-paragraph letter to the judge asking for a day to respond, for a day to respond to Maxwell's gagging request. And if they were caught off guard, shame on them. But this is exactly the response, right? You have to shoot off a little something, something to the judge on your in defense of what you have going on, and you have to persuade the judge not to go about and do what Maxwell's lawyers have asked. And I really think that Judge Nathan here is not going to acquiesce to this request, folks. I don't think she will, but who knows? Again, we will have to see. She said the two sides had been working through the weekend towards an agreement before the surprise filing by the defense. The U.S. Attorney's Office and Everdell did not immediately respond to a request for comment. 
Judge Nathan had already slapped down a request from Maxwell's lawyers to bar prosecutors from speaking to the media about the case. But the court But the court told the attorneys to tread carefully in interviews, writing it warns counsel and agents for the parties and counsel for potential witnesses that going forward it will not hesitate to take appropriate action in the face of violations of any relevant rules. Well, so she already made that ruling, right? So if rules have not been broken and the prosecution or the lawyers for the, the survivors have not done anything that would make Judge Nathan look sideways at them, why would they even bother with this, this other request? And, of course, it is just to muddy the waters. It is to murky thing, to make things murky and to get things moving in a direction where there's a bit of chaos. That's what they operate in, chaos. That's what they're hoping for. The legal spat follows news that a bombshell cache of previously sealed documents in a civil case against Maxwell are set to be turned over to the public this week and are reportedly set to expose the details of her allegedly sordid sex life. And again, this request tells you everything you need to know about those documents that are about to be released. This this dump is going to be pretty damning. And you see how her lawyers are trying to get in front of it here. And it is very apparent what they're doing. U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska unsealed the documents during a Thursday teleconference and gave Maxwell's defense team a week to file an appeal. The files come from a 2015 defamation lawsuit by Virginia Roberts, who accused Maxwell of lying and sexually abusing her as a teenager and pimping her out to rich and powerful men, including the Queen's son, Prince Andrew. Look, all of this stuff that we're hearing right now, all of this stuff that is coming out, the documents that are coming out in the defamation case, her, um, Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers attempting to get everything gagged, it's, it's obvious what's about to come down the pipe, folks. And this Thursday, Preska says that's when it's going to be released unless the second court of appeals jumps in and uh, speaks up about what they plan on doing. Preska wants this stuff to get moving in a forthright manner, and she wants to keep the documents coming out, according to her, in a rolling fashion. So we'll get one dump, then, I don't know, how, however long after we get another dump, and we, they just keep rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling until all of the files that have been earmarked to be unsealed are finally unsealed and available for public consumption. There's going to be a lot of reading to do, folks, all right? I hope everybody has their reading glasses ready and a couple of jolt cola, colas or a couple of bangs or whatever it is you drink for energy. We're going to need a lot of that because there is going to be tons to go over. And I plan on, once the, the documents drop, I plan on sequestering myself in the house and going through as much of them as I can until my eyes begin to bleed. So we got some interesting stuff coming this week, folks, some stuff to look forward to as far as evidence in the case, context in the case, and maybe some revelations that we did not know about. I'm pretty interested to see just exactly what is in that treasure trove of documents, especially my interest is most certainly, certainly picked, uh, is most certainly locked in at this point now considering they're asking for this gag order right away in the beginning of the week when we know that Thursday is the day that the documents are released. So you have to think, you have to believe that Ghislaine Maxwell's law team and Ghislaine Maxwell herself understand what is in those documents. They know how harmful they are going to be to Ghislaine Maxwell and others. And their only option is to make this move right here and try and make a preemptive strike to get it all gagged so that it is not spread around on the internet, on social media, and for the general public to consume because they understand even as we speak without these documents out, they have an untenable position and they know that they are up against it and they do not have many options. So expect to see more of this from Ghislaine Maxwell's law team. Expect to see them use every trick in the book, every tool that they have in their toolbox to try and do whatever they can 
to get Ghislaine Maxwell out of jail. Unfortunately for them, it won't be enough. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that pertain to this episode, you will be able to find in the description box. All right, everybody, we'll be, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll do it all over again.